Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I'm Tim with Love of the Grain Workshop. Today we're going to feature an all new product from Incredible Solutions, uh, which is their new mold putty for epoxy resin. Stay tuned. So as I've stated, we've got a new product from Incredible Solutions, their Mold Putty. It is a two-part, one-to-one mix, um, kind of like a dough almost, that turns into basically a silicone uh, once it's hardened. Um, it's pretty quick, pretty easy to use. Um, I'll show you some examples of one I already did um, and what I'm using them for. I'm going to use them for resin. I would assume most people are going to use them for resin. I would assume you could also maybe use them for um, soap molds, things like that. Uh, but I want to make some cool little unique designs and shapes uh, using epoxy resin, which, uh, again, I would definitely recommend Incredible Solutions for their epoxy resin as well. That's how I first started using them and heard of them. Um, so thanks for uh, watching the video. Please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell uh, and leave me any comments you'd like uh, or questions in the comments below. Thank you very much. So here it is. As I said, it says, please read this entire instruction sheet before beginning your project. If you have any questions, please contact or call us. And I tell you right now, they have one of the best customer service um, people around um, on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, it's super easy and quick to get up with them. Uh, that's another reason I love working with them. They did send me this uh, to try out for free. Um, I'm giving you my 100% honest uh, opinion of it though, uh, as far as I've used it so far. They do not pay me uh, anything for making this video. Um, so let's get started. You measure equal amounts of putty part A, part B by pulling the same amount of each, out of each jar. I would recommend if you have a little scale maybe in your kitchen or something like that uh, for measuring food and things, use that. You can roll out little amounts and measure them in grams to be accurate um, to get it uh, dead even. Um, but so far I've used an eye. I've made a couple balls of each. Um, eyeing it out and then measuring it that way and it comes out pretty close to being even every time. Uh, to calculate calculate the needed putty, pull enough out of side A that will cover half the item, flatten it to the desired mold thickness, be sure it covers the other half of your item uh, with part B. So that's kind of what I did and what I did is um, I made this little fractal burned piece of wood for my wife for a pendant um, and I thought hey it'd be cool if I could make some resin molds with that as well. So I mixed part A and part B, excuse it being a little dirty, my hands were dirty when I did it, um, and molded it, flattened the bottom, gave it about 25 minutes, and then pulled it out of the mold. I don't know, that seems to be pretty sturdy on there too. I was kind of worried about that, uh, especially when it comes to pulling out resin, but I just used a little tool in my garage here and pushed it through as I pulled it out and it worked pretty good. Um, and I really like how it got the detail of that fractal burn. So for example, I could pour this um, with some resin, pull it out, flip it over, and then pour a color into that crack. Because uh, essentially it'll look like this with a gap, and I could pour some color in that, in the fractal burn there. So that'd be kind of cool to do, um, I thought, for some of our shows and stuff that I do. Now, um, kind of experimenting. Um, I've got a little piece here that actually a friend made and gave to my daughter out of some epoxy resin, um, and I kind of liked it. So I figured, hey, why not? mold that and then I could make some similar to it as well um, and then I've got a couple cufflinks here that I thought would be cool as rings um, or something like that uh, maybe even pendants so this is technically this is actually Russian amber um, but it's a cool shape nice mold to it so I think that'll be fairly easy to mold and then I've got a pair of cufflinks like this which are like I think it's old cat's eye and it's actually got some cool little like uh, Roman or Greek looking figures on it. I thought it'd be cool if I could try to cast that and make little pendants or something like that out of that as well. So we're going to try that today. And I'll show you how quick and easy this is. Okay, hopefully you can see that well. So you got part A and part B. Part B is yellow, part A is white. Um, so I'm going to just eye it. So I know I don't need much to mold something out of that little piece. So I'm just gonna take, and there's quite a bit in here. I think it's like 30 bucks or maybe 40 bucks for these two tubs for a pound of it total. Um, looks like it'll probably go a distance. Unfortunately, my fingers are so dirty, it's gonna change color. 
but I don't think that'll affect the mold at all. So what I do is, without my scale, I don't have my scale out here right now, I'm gonna make a ball. I wash my hands too, it's so funny, so much is coming off. Wash another, make another ball. They look fairly similar, fairly close in size. Um, so I'm gonna say that's pretty close to 50-50. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna just mold it, mush them together, fold it over, fold it over, mush. Um, you wanna do this until you don't see any more swirls. See how you can see right there? It's kind of white and yellow swirl. You wanna do that till it's an even color everywhere. So just keep pushing and molding. Kind of, I do it like this where I kind of fold it over on itself. Similar to what you do with um, pizza dough, uh, where you can fold it over and fold it over and fold it over and fold it over. Just keep doing that until you get to a nice even look. Still got a little bit more white in there. So we're gonna keep going where I could, don't see the white at all separate from the yellow or the yellow separate from the white. So it looks pretty good. Now, to help with creases, again, go back to that same thing. Try to fold it over, fold it over, and then smush. That way, you kind of get rid of some of those creases. You don't really want creases in your mold. And then what I do, that leaves this side with no creases. So then, if you make from this, I'm gonna actually kind of try to make a, a ball. You got, 15, 20 minutes till it cures fully. But I can tell you right now, after about five minutes, depending on the temperature, of course, where you're working, um, it's gonna start getting a little bit harder to ply. It's gonna start turning rubbery and, and you're not gonna be able to mold it very well. So work with it within five minutes, I would say, and get going on your mold. So I made my kind of a ball there. Now I'm just gonna press, this is smoothed edged and rounded kind of on the corners. So I don't really have to worry too much about how I put it on. Basically, I wanna, and because I wanna pour resin in these, I wanna build up a wall around the outside edge, see? So it's like up and over the edge. So that when, when I do my pour, the resin's not gonna just pour off the side of that. Um, and then what you're gonna do is on the back side, just kinda carefully set it on a flat surface or get a flat surface even, like a piece of wood um, or something flat. And you just wanna kinda mush it so you have a flat surface on the bottom so that when you go to pour your mold, it sits flush, it sits flat, it doesn't sit crooked, you know what I mean? So again, I wanna kinda angle that in there just like that and leave that. And I'm gonna set this one aside right there. Let that sit 15, 20 minutes. And I'm gonna work on this one. Do the same thing. This one's not quite as big, but I'll probably still use close to the same amount just because I wanna, I want a sturdy mold. Um, I don't want a flimsy, thin-walled mold that either is gonna break or come apart when I go to take it out of the mold. Again, I haven't really had too much experience using this yet. I haven't actually made something out of the molds, um, just that one, uh, but I haven't poured any resin in it, so. But it's pretty stiff. This one here that I already made was is pretty stiff-walled and it's getting stiffer by the hour. So, I mean, it should, it seems like it's gonna hold up really well. It's actually stiffer than my normal um, silicone molds that I use. I have some silicone molds that I use for fish and that I use for coasters. And they're very soft walled and very soft and squishy, um, almost like this, but just not pliable. And the coasters especially, um, I've used them a lot, but over time they just, the mold wears out and it just, it becomes too loose. And so the edges aren't square on the coasters like they should be. Whereas this feels much stiffer, but still a little pliable where I could get the mold out. So it should last longer. It should hold up better to flexing and moving and peeling, you know, resin out of the molds, things like that. Um, but just imagine the possibilities you could do with this. It's, it's fairly cheap. I mean, I'm gonna make a few different molds here and I'll be able to make a bunch of stuff out of them, you know, compared to so this one, I'm gonna do a ball. And I've got that little Roman kind of figure. Sorry for the lighting. Um, so, I mean, you know, if you've got anything, you know, um, their example video online is a puzzle piece that looks like a pendant, I think it was. Really cool idea for making different molds um, for just about anything, any shapes. Um, I've got some plastic toy fish that my son has that I thought would be really cool in resin. Um, instead of using his toy fish, I'm gonna make a mold out of it um, and try to do it that way. Um, then I can make resin fish out of it rather than having to go buy a bunch of molds I can make all different ones so that one's in 
I'm gonna try to try not to move that one around because that's got a lot of detail. So I kind of need to squish that one up into it. Fairly decent. And again, if it's a little deeper than it's supposed to be, I don't care um, because I can always polish it down. And then I'm gonna make it. Try and make this. Uh, nope. I'm gonna start over because I moved it around too much, which made it not clear. So I'm gonna. I got a few minutes left still. So I'm gonna push it around. And I want to get that flat edge right there. And I'm going to try to push it. And you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to make my flat edge on the bottom first. It's already getting a little stiff. It's getting there. It's, it's still pliable, but it's, it's getting stiff. So I got my flat edge first. Now I'm going to mold this in there. That way once I get it in, I'm done. I don't have to move it around. Push that in. And that one's done. Set that over there. Hopefully that one will come out. Um, it's, it's got a lot of detail, so I'm hoping it will. Now we're gonna do this last one here. flat and it all looks one color so we're good to go um, I will put links for this and for um, some of the resins as well which I again recommend using uh, they're excellent resins for the price um, work just as good as some of the extremely high-end brands out there for a lot less um, they have tabletop UV protected they have deep pour resin which is fantastic stuff um, so I'll put all those in there and link them to you so, you know what, let's do this. I think it's easier to get the flat surface first on the bottom and then squish this into it. And you know, I'm gonna leave it right there. Squish that in enough that it goes up over the edges a little bit. Creates kind of a dam for the resin. You know what, nah, I won't do that. Okay. So we've got our three molds ready. That one's already getting rubbery. And we're just gonna let them sit. 15 to 20 minutes and we'll come back. And we're back. It's been about 20, maybe 25 minutes. Um, and we're gonna check these out. So first we're gonna go with the first cuff link that I put in. And it's definitely gotten harder. And look at that, pop right out, right out. That smooth surface really helped it. Um, Perfectly, it's got that little edge around where the gold was, or where the so goldish metal was. But inside, it's smooth as a baby's bottom. So that should work out well. And it's got a nice flat bottom for us to set on surfaces when we're ready to do that. Now let's see. Let's try this one first. This one's gonna be a little difficult because of this little clasp that's on there or whatever, a little loop. Comes right out. And look at that, it slips right out. Man, I love how the way it comes out, it's so satisfying. And again, super smooth. And it's got that little wall up there for the resin to sit in. And now this is the, uh, the one. This is the one I really hope comes out right and has some good detail, we'll see. Look at that. Perfect, perfect, perfect details. Right down to the metal on his helmet, the hair in his beard, the armor on his chest, and he even got the other guy there. I was standing right behind him. Perfect. Almost looks like a little bagel. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, I mean, this is perfect. This has got some form and flex to it, but it's not too soft about earlier and you can see these are super flexy a little too soft a little too flexible um, they even though they have this in the middle they tend to sag a little bit 
when you pour resin in, when you fill them up. And then if you look at the edges, that edge is coming away. It's not holding its form. It's not straight anymore. So they flare out at the edges when they're supposed to be straight. Whereas this, this is flexible. This is flexible. I can bend it, I can move it. But it's not so flexible that it feels like it's going to either one, tear or rip or break or eventually give way and just not hold its shape anymore. So I think it's an awesome product. Um, definitely get some to try it out even just for yourself. Um, don't necessarily take my word for it, um, but it's Incredible Solutions Mold Putty. Excellent, excellent product. Cannot wait to pour some resin into these. Well, that's it guys. Uh, another little product test for an all new product that uh, looks like it's gonna actually work out pretty well for me anyway. I um, hope you guys give it a chance um, and give Incredible Solutions uh, a chance. And um, remember, like, follow, subscribe. I really appreciate it. Hit that follow button uh, or that bell so you get notified uh, whenever I come up with a new video. And I really appreciate you watching today. Um, it helps keep me making these videos. Have a great day. Yeah.